the cross-post study was um, essentially the first randomized trial to compare different cross-sex strategies for CTO intervention. Until now, we haven't had any randomized comparison. There are some groups of thought, uh, maybe U.S. favoring an early use of undergraded sexual reentry. Other parts of the world, they favor use the guide to war escalation first. So we try to compare the uh, upfront use of the cross post catheter versus an upfront use of guide wires and see which strategy is more efficient in terms of crossing time for the canalizing coronary CTOs. The technology used is the cross post catheter. The cross post is a metallic catheter, has a one millimeter blunt atraumatic tip, and it's advanced to the proximal cap at the beginning of the CTO. Then the wire is withdrawn inside the catheter, and the catheter is rotated very quickly using what's called the fast spin technique. And the purpose is for have the catheter to move through the occlusion. In about a quarter or third of cases, it goes from true lumen to true lumen. But in other cases, it may go in a branch or subindimal. And then if it goes subindimal, then we can use a system like the Stingray to get back into the distal true lumen. So it's a device that can help you get to the proximal cap, sometimes in the true lumen, sometimes subindimally. But if you go subindimally, you can use the Stingray system to get back in the true lumen. This was a randomized trial. It was done in 11 sites in the United States. They were all very experienced sites. And um, we randomized one-to-one -to, -one to either the crossbows used in the beginning versus uh, using initially another guide wire escalation. After the initial step, we did not mandate any specific strategy, but people were free to use whichever strategy they wanted to use. The inclusion criteria were very simple. Essentially, it was a CTO with a planned undergrade approach. We excluded osteo lesions less than five millimeters from the ostium of the vessel and excluded patients for whom they were planning a primary retrograde approach. The patients were randomized again one to one and then after the first steps they were treated according to the interventionalist uh, uh, plan. And then the primary endpoint was the crossing time from the moment of uh, getting access in the groin until the crossing or the end of the procedure. And the primary safety endpoint was the risk of periprocedural complications. We did find that the overall success was similar in the two groups. It was about 88% technical success, which is um, very good and is pretty typical now in the current era with experienced operators like the ones used in the study. We did find that uh, the res complications risk were similar, 4% in the wires versus 3% in the crossbows group, so that was uh, very similar. The two groups were well matched otherwise in terms of uh, baseline characteristics and angiographic characteristics. In terms of the primary endpoint, which was the crossing time, it was 56 minutes in the crossbows group and 66 minutes in the guide wire group, which was not statistically significant. In an analysis, a post hoc analysis of uh, subgroups, the patients within stentary stenosis actually had shorter uh, crossing time, 41 minutes, uh, compared to the patients used with um, undergrade wire escalation. So for this group of patients, it looks like the crossbows uh, might work pretty well. In terms of safety, it was similar in both arms. Actually, there was a P06 um, trend for less perforations in the crossbows group, suggesting that this device and this strategy is uh, safe. We also found that uh, the equipment utilization and costs were actually similar in the two uh, study groups. So there was no penalty in using first a crossbow catheter versus using an undergrade wire escalation. And the last thing that was important is that even in the wire escalation group, 22% of the patients, the final successful strategy was the undergrade dissection reentry. Therefore, even in those patients who get wires first, in about a quarter of them, you do need the sexual reentry to completely uh, complete the procedure successfully. The study was uh, designed to see if starting with the cross boss has advantages over using the guide wire. What it shows that overall they have similar outcomes, but it works, it looks like better for the instant stenosis. So in my mind, this would be the preferred strategy for instant stenotic CTOs. It's a, safe, it's a safe device, so there was concerns for safety, but the study shows that although it's not powered for safety, it does show that things are good, and if anything, there's a trend for better safety than uh, guide wire escalation. And the message, I think, is that all strategies can work in the end, but uh, uh, the, the main thing is have everything in your armamentarium, because even if you start with wires, you're going to need using the sexual reentry in about a quarter of the patients. 
this was a technical tri trial, looking at different strategies for canalizing occlusions. But I think even now in 2017, we still don't have a definitive trial on the clinical indication and when this procedure should be done. There is decision CTO with many limitations. There is um, the Euro CTO that was uh, much better designed but still underpowered for the primary endpoint, although it did show some benefit for symptoms and quality of life. But I think we do need a randomized controlled trial of SAM control versus CTO PCI to definitively answer the question how much is helping the patient's symptoms, which I do believe it is. I do believe that CTO PCI does improve patient's symptoms, reduces angina, reduces dyspnea in those who have symptoms to start with, but it needs to be proven so that everyone is in the same boat and the controversy or is it beneficial or not becomes much less than it is currently.